Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It's Jason here. Um, in my third video, in the continual um, path of getting through every single position in Major League Baseball, today I'm going to talk about the top five shortstops in Major League Baseball heading into uh, 2020. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed my other videos. If you haven't seen them below, I already posted my first baseman and my second baseman. They're down below in the description. And I also put uh, another video or two down there as well. I put my projections for the 2020 for each team um, based on moves that they've made this offseason. I put their 2019 record and I put their projected 2020 record based on things that they have done or have not done. And that's signings and trades and so on. So um, I hope you enjoyed these videos. And again, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel and you're a baseball fan, smash that button and smash the notification if you want to see more videos like this. I'm going to keep these short and sweet, maybe five, six minutes. My other videos are a little bit longer, but these are it's a short list and I want you to be able to get through them all, especially if you only have five, ten minutes throughout a day. I want to make sure that you enjoy them and please share them with your friends and family and any baseball fans that you know. Okay, And I appreciate all feedback and support. So with that said, let's get to my top shortstops in baseball heading into 2020. All right. Um, this actually is the first time I'm going to have a tie, and I'm going to have a tie in two spots because there's so many good shortstops that uh, it's really hard to condense them down to five. And I kind of see a couple of guys on an even playing field. So with that said, let's get to the number five. There's a tie. Um, it's really hard to go wrong with either one of these guys. Xander Bogarts and... Uh, Tatis Jr. from the San Diego Padres. Okay, Fernando Tatis Jr. Both of them, young stud players. This guy's a budding superstar. Bogarts is another one. Both consistent players, young, dynamic guys on the offensive and the defensive end. They're both well-balanced players. Anybody um, on these lists is not a one-dimensional player. They're both good on the offensive and the defensive end. They might be stronger on one side than the other, and that's okay, but they're not like butchering um, they're not butchering on the offense or on the defensive end. So some of them can use a little bit of work, but you can make that determination yourself. So anyway, Bogarts and Tatis are my tie for number five. <laughs> I have one more tie for number four, and then after that, no more ties. All right? Number four, another, another tough one. Javier Baez from the Cubs and Glaber Torres from the New York Yankees. Okay? Both. Stronger on the offensive end than they are on the defensive end, and Baez might be a little bit stronger right now on the offense. I mean, then on the uh, defensive end, and Glaber Torres is a little bit stronger on the offensive end. But Glaber Torres is also now moving from his natural position uh, to his natural position, moving from second base back to shortstop, whereas DJ Lemayo is moving from first over to second base now. Now that Didi's has moved on and to Philadelphia, so he'll be a full-time shortstop. So he's to me tied with Javier Baez. They kind of balance each other out very well. Um, they're my number four. Number three, <clears throat> underrated but an absolute stud player on another great underrated team, Marcus Simeon from the Oakland Athletics. <clears throat> Good player. Offense, defense. They have so many underrated players on that team, and that's one reason why they were, you know, I think about a 100-game winner last year. I'm close to it, and I think they're my, they're my pick to win the National League West um, over the Astros and over the Texas Rangers. Um and uh, he's my number three. Again, is a very well-balanced player, consistent performer on both sides of the field. So, Marcus Simeon, number three. Number two, now we're getting into the nitty-gritty here. One of the trade candidates for every single team this offseason, Francisco Lindor of the Cleveland Indians. He could easily be number one, but I do have somebody who's just a tad bit above him who's also part of a kind of a dynamic duo. I still can see Francisco Lindor being traded. Um, you know, I, I really don't know what the uh, Indians are going to do. I mean, if they move Lindor, they're probably going to move Clevenger. If they move Clevenger, they're probably going to move Lindor. They have to kind of decide what they're going to do in the Central. They're going to have their work cut out for him this year because they're going to have to go after the Twins and the White Sox. And that division is going to be really, really tough. So, But he's still my number two, and he could easily make a lot of teams better. But my number one, okay, National League player, part of a, a dynamic offensive duo, Colorado, Trevor Story, the shortstop. He's obviously with that pairing with Nolan Arenado. That's a nasty 3-4 punch or 2-3 punch, whatever they are on the lineup, a 4-5, whatever they are. But that's one hell of a duo there. Again, 
to me, the probably the top shortstop in baseball on the offensive and the defensive end combined. Consistent performer. And he, his, his, his home road splits are not as drastic as one may think. Um, he's consistent pretty much everywhere he plays. So, um, so that's my list. That's my five top shortstops in Major League Baseball heading into 2020. Let me know what you think. Put your comments down below if you have a list of your own. I want to know it. I, I, you know, again, I read all the comments and I read all the feedback from everybody because I want to try to learn as much from you as you hopefully, you know, pick up a few things from me. And, and I, and I said this in on my first video. The reason why I do a list like this instead of putting out a, you know, a flashy video and hiring somebody to do all these crazy things, and I'll eventually get to that point. But I don't want to do it at the expense of something like this because not many, not everybody's going to know who Marcus Simeon is. It gives you an opportunity to, to look up this person and see why they're on this list. Okay, so having somebody just die for a ball or hitting a home run, these guys do, do all these guys do that. But if you you know you look these guys up, if, if you see a name that's not familiar, you'll know why I do the list like this. So and you you know get an exa you'll get an idea of why Fernando Tatis Jr. is on there. Not everybody thinks or generally thinks about him uh, the way they think about Francisco Lindor. Okay, um, and you notice on the guy the guy I didn't even have the kid from the Nationals on here. Um, you know, I have some honorable, he's, he'll be right in that list, right above it. I mean, right below it, like around six or something. Um, I think it's Trey Turner, I think his name is. Um, easily, these guys can easily be on this list, but here's my five. Let me know, or my seven, actually. Condense into five. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and hit that notification. If you enjoyed the video, click that thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.